I have here three examples of making technology, and it's interesting to see how the making community treats each one of these with respect to safety. For instance, if you ask the community in general about FDM 3D printer, they'll say it's safe. Light curing resin 3D printers like this Hallet 1 by Creality, they will tell you it's safe enough. Put a little asterisk above it that says with proper precaution. But this open air laser cutter like this Atom Stack A5 Pro is unsafe under any conditions. You shouldn't use it. I should not show it to you. You might get ideas. I'm a terrible person. But why can't we take that asterisk over light curing resin and put it onto open air laser cutters like this? Hmm? Hey everybody, I'm Joe, and for years I have been saying in my videos, safety first. Usually at the end of my videos, and the irony of that does not escape me. I say that because, well, I kind of need to take you back. I've been making YouTube videos about 3D printing for a very long time, but in 2016, a tragedy occurred. In 2016, 3D printing had its first, and as far as I know, only fatality. As the news reported on it at the time, a young man was using a 3D printer and he had been using hairspray to stick the prints to his print bed. There were three empty cans of hairspray there and they say that that cloud of flammable gas was in the air and somehow ignited. That ignition caused a dramatic explosion and killed a 17 year old boy. Except that's not entirely what happened and chances are you've already dissected that story a little bit. And in fact, more facts came to light later, like the fact that he was using this 3D printer in a magic shop right next to flash paper. That whatever ignited caused smoke and it was smoke inhalation, not a dramatic explosion that killed him. Okay, so sensational news can't be trusted, but one thing that they said kind of stuck with me. They said that this young man had learned to use hairspray from the internet and on YouTube. Now, a funny thing about that, if you do a search right now for hairspray, glass, 3D printer, you'll find lots of videos. Many people have talked about using this technique. But back in 2016, look for the ones that are old enough that this young man might have seen him. There was only one. And this guy was in it. Yes, I was the one who made the video that told people to not just put a little spritz of hairspray on there, but to really douse your build plate with hairspray, let it dry, and douse it again. And while there's really nothing particularly wrong with that, hairspray does use propane as an accelerant. It is flammable. That's the part that goes whoosh when you light a lighter in front of it, which I, I don't recommend. And nowhere in that video did I say, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. Nowhere did I say, be careful with the flammable gases coming out of there. Nowhere did I say anything about safety, first, last, or at all. Maybe I was just naive. Maybe I just assumed that people would understand that you need to be careful with these things. Maybe I just wasn't thinking. But despite the fact that these sensational news outlets were annoying, I couldn't deny that they weren't wrong. My video didn't tell people to be safe with a potential danger point. Now, I'm not beating myself up about this young man's death. I'm not saying, oh, it's my fault. If I had done things differently, he might be alive today. He might, but we don't know. There's enough other circumstances surrounding it. But I did decide from that day forward that in all of my videos, I would remind people to be safe, to think about safety first. Now, what does safety first mean? Does it mean that we should never do anything if it's not completely safe? Oh, come on, no. If we never do anything that's not completely safe, oh, we're just gonna end up staying at home, hiding under our covers all the time. Living has risks associated with it, and we shouldn't shy away from those, but 
Safety first means that whenever you're doing something, you should learn about it, you should try and figure out how it might hurt you, and then proceed with awareness. Or not. You, of course, have the option of looking at something, weighing the benefits and the risks, doing an analysis and going, yeah, that's that's just not for me. And, and that's fine. You don't have to be into something because I'm into something or because anybody else is into something. You could look at the situation and say, my circumstances, I don't want to, to get into that. And that's fine. That is perfectly okay. Sorry, that was just something that I didn't say and I felt needed to be added to the conversation. Okay, back to it. If you are working in a situation where other people's safety may be in jeopardy, you might want to make rules and tell them, listen, we got to stick to these rules. But for individuals, for you, you don't need to worry about rules as much as you just need to worry about being aware of what the danger could be and what you could do to mitigate it for instance, let's let's apply this to FDM 3D printing. First, we learn a little bit about 3D printing. Well, it starts with this thin noodle of plastic that gets fed in through a motor, moved around in three dimensions, and squirted out. Now, how could this harm us? Well, that filament, when it goes in, does melt, and so it could maybe create fumes. That movement system is moving blind. It's a motor, and if you have loose-fitting clothing or ties around that might get caught in that. Ah, uh, what else? Oh, the hot end. It does get hot. It's probably not going to kill you, but it could give you a good welt. Now, was there anything else that I needed to... Oh yeah, if you're going to be using chemicals in your 3D printing, be aware of the chemicals that you might be using. So now that we've learned about FFF 3D printing, now that we recognize how it could hurt us, then let's be a little bit smart and aware as we use it. Maybe as the 3D printer is moving around, you're not gonna stick your fingers in it if you don't have to. And if you do have to, you're gonna be careful about it. Maybe when that hot end is hot, you're gonna try not to touch it. And about those fumes and, and the melting plastic, generally speaking, as long as you're not too close to it, at about 25 feet, even the volatile organic micro compounds condense to thicker things and are safe. So just don't use it right next to your face if you can get away with it. If you can, use it in a well-ventilated area. If you can, open a window when you're using it. And if you can't, if you're a college kid and using it in your dorm is the only thing that you can do, well then just be aware of that as you go forward. Also, as we've already seen, a fire could start. It's an electrical device. So maybe you might want to think about going to the hardware store and getting a fire extinguisher and keeping that on hand just to be a little bit safer. Again, none of these are rules. This is moving forward with awareness and taking what would be reasonable precautions. Now let's apply that same pattern to resin cured 3D printers. Resin cured 3D printers uses a liquid resin that when exposed to light hardens into a solid object. It has a single motor that goes down, picks up the print layer by layer, and pulls it out. So now that we've learned a little bit about resin 3D printing, what's the big deal? Where's the danger point? Only one little motor? Come on! Well, you might already be aware, but the common resin that is used in resin 3D printing is toxic in its liquid form. In fact, if you buy one of these 3D printers, they won't even send the resin with it because, because they can't. This has some very special shipping procedures that need to be followed and forms that need to be filled out. And they don't want to deal with that for just the hardware. So they send the hardware and the resin separately. Now, how bad is this resin, really? Well, you know, I wasn't able to verify the rumors that I heard about how this stuff affects you, so I'm not going to repeat them here. Just suffice it to say, it's bad enough that they call it toxic and won't ship it with the 3D printer. So, what do you do about that? If this is the big deal, well, you... you do what you should. You wear gloves when you use it. Try to keep it off of your skin. 
if necessary, put on a mask. You remember when these masks were hard to get? Man, those were the days. But put on a mask so that you're not breathing in the fumes on it. Keep, keep your contact to this material as minimal as possible. Now, for me, I have children. And if you have pets or children, you might want to be extra concerned about having this resin around. One careless moment, leaving the vat on the side of the table while you clean something up and a, a curious child reaching up and grabbing it down, splashing it all over themselves. Make sure that you have solvents like isopropyl alcohol on hand to wash it. Don't use water to wash this stuff off. But yeah, I have children and so this, I'll be honest, kind of scared me for a while and, and I've been keeping away from it. I won't use these 3D printers in the house. They get used in the garage away from the kids and if the kids are around, I don't ever use it at all with them. So that's, I guess, the awareness of moving forward, the awareness that this is the bad stuff, so be careful with it. Now, once it's fully cured, it's safe. It's not going to be absorbed into you. So you know, don't worry about the cured prints and let the kids play with those. Maybe don't encourage them to stick it in their mouths, but otherwise it will be fine. But just, just be cautious around the uncured resin going forward. So what could possibly be worse than that, that these open air laser cutters scare people so bad? Well, let's just apply the same steps that we have before and see if there's something in this that's so bad that we really need to stay away from it. First of all, it's another mechanical device. It moves with motors and the X and the Y, but this one uses a high powered, in this case, diode laser to create a intense heat that can cut through flammable materials like cardboard and wood. And if you do something silly, like leave something reflective on the table, like I don't know, say you're, you're doing something stupid like trying to cut a CD-ROM just to see if a laser could go through the CD-ROM, not thinking about the fact that a CD-ROM has a thin layer of highly reflective material and that that highly reflective material is going to bounce light around the room and it won't actually cut at all. I never should have tried that. That was stupid. I, sh I shouldn't have done that. So the biggest danger point is that laser and the material that you're putting in. You are intentionally trying to cut it with fire. And if you use too much fire, it will be on fire. And of course, there's the fumes that this thing puts off. Because we are cutting things with fire, that means that they are burning. And depending on what you've put in there, the fumes that come off of it could be very bad, possibly even toxic. Okay, so now we've learned about the technology. Let's think about moving forward if we were to with caution, how could we do that? You know, most of these laser cutters come with some sort of eye protection. Most of them don't go quite around my huge cranium, but they do do a good job of keeping that last little bit of light from shining directly into your eyes and protecting your eyes if needs be. Of course, if you're gonna be using this in a space where there are other people and somebody walks in, you might wanna be able to stop it fast and say, hold on for a second, get your eyes covered up or, or step out until I'm done. And these cuts usually don't take very long. Of course, we are trying to light stuff on fire to cut it. So it might be a good idea to, again, have some fire suppression on hand, or if not fire suppression, a bucket of water is usually enough. I've used a 45 watt laser in the past, and I've never seen a dramatic fire come up from these things. Usually it's just a small smolder, and that small smolder, if you don't panic, you can usually pick up the material from the side that's not smoldering and douse it in the water fairly quickly. It's it's really, don't panic. Number one, whenever something bad happens, don't panic. That'll keep you safe most of the time. But yeah, the fires that this causes usually aren't too bad. And as for fumes, well, just be careful with what you put in there. Read the material data sheet on anything that you put in here and, and make sure that you're being smart about it. Don't, don't try to cut CD-ROMs. You could also potentially get one of these little HEPA filter fans and whenever you're using the laser, 
have it next to it to draw the smoke out and filter it. These are great. Or even a more expensive and fancy air filtration units are sometimes available if you're worried about that. They do a great job of keeping the air clean while you're working. And again, you need to stay close to this while it's running. Don't ever let it run unattended. It'll be done in a very short amount of time, especially compared to 3D printing. So what do you think? Can we move forward with this sort of open air laser cutter with awareness? Or are the risks involved with this quick and immediate enough that you think that I should stay away from this as well? I'm going to defer to you guys on this subject and I want to hear in the comments. Do you want more content about this sort of open air laser cutter or should I just put it away and not talk about it on this channel again? If you agree that it's just too much of a risk for people, let me know and I'm done. I will not ever talk about this again. If you think that we can move forward with proper precautions with this open air laser cutter, the same as we might with other things that are questionable in their safety, then, you know, maybe I'll do some more content about these laser cutters. We'll explore what they're capable of doing, where the strengths and weaknesses are, provided that we keep talking about safety as we do it. Let me know in the comments where you would like this discussion to go in the future, and I look forward to hearing from you. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time.